Hey besties, welcome back to the channel. Make sure you got your wine, your water, or your rolling tray, or whatever you need to tune in with me. Y'all, I'm, I'm not fully sure where this is going right now because I turned this video on, like I was just sitting on my couch minding my business. I was like, you know what? Let me just scroll through YouTube, see what they got going on today. Like seeing like, you know, like the, um, I wouldn't call them tea pages. They're like commentary channels behind the music type stuff. And like, I like watching those videos because they're not from a conspiracy standpoint, but I always end up seeing things where I need to talk about it because I'm like, how did you make this whole video? And you, you're not catching on or like, do you just not care? So I started watching this video and the more I kept watching, things started clicking for me that I was like, is this clicking for anybody else? And the, I want to be, be very clear. This is just like me observing, listening, and this is my Shelby brain working. This is not, this is not fact. This is nothing I researched. I didn't look into this. This is just, I didn't even finish the video because as I was watching it, I literally turned it off and was like, I'm going to make a video because I'm, so that's what we're doing today. I just, I, I want to know how the video ends because if it confirms like further confirms like the theory that I have in my head then I'm just like it's crazy you guys are gonna watch this and I'm not even trying to point no elbows right now but it's just seeming really funny and you guys are gonna know what I'm talking about when we get into the video so yeah make sure you have everything that you need bear with me <laughs> I'm gonna hit this already have my oregano rolled because you know we can't watch videos without having our oregano it's just not fun i don't have any wine or tea or anything today just me and my water so a lot of y'all are kind of slow too like y'all be in my comments like are you really like is that really oregano <laughs> yo why would i go in my kitchen cabinet and put oregano inside of this come on like let's it's just i don't know how many of y'all are watching with y'all kids i don't know how many like underage people are actually watching me so i just don't i just say oregano so that we are all clear that i'm not telling anybody to go do anything illegal well it's pretty legal everywhere but you know what i mean like there's no peer pressure on this channel that's why you have options to go grab your wine your water or your roller drink. you can just drink some water and mind your business you go get a snack get some little juicy juice like i really i now to find the video that I was watching because I'm when I tell you this was like really not even a fully thought out plan in my head like I was just sitting on the couch I had like four other videos planned if you guys follow me on Instagram you probably know I write out a lot of my videos before I record them and that's why I usually have my laptop or like iPad anything in front of me like so that I know like I'm not missing any bullet points some of my videos are like rant style where I have no bullet points I'm just talking this was not like a plan at all I was literally just sitting here looking for something to watch and it slapped me in the face and was like hey you should react to this so I turned it off and decided to turn the camera on <laughs> okay yeah so this video is from black femininity tv yeah black femininity tv why the uh, femininity femininity tv i think i said it right the first time. i don't even know why that's just it sounded so weird you ever like have a word that like you try to read it and it looks weird or like you try to say it and it's just not sounding right yeah that was like i had a moment the video is about 15 minutes long oh i do have on my i don't miss shirt today my merch um if you like shirts or hoodies whatever you want link is in the description but thank you so much for everybody who has already bought my merch or has just been supporting the channel like just y'all being here watching means enough i appreciate y'all but i get so mad like when you guys dm me or like write me or like even in the comments and be like oh like i don't have money but like i'm gonna don't please do not like do not like you being here is i i appreciate it like i i love you guys don't send me your last do not like please make sure your cup is full first before you pour into other people's cups not even just me just have boundaries in your life like no matter how much you love people it's sometimes you have to take care of yourself before you take care of others so please please <laughs> but if you do have the means to donate or support i appreciate every cent like seriously so um i just wanted to say that thank you for my screen before the likes of Lori Harvey and Angela Simmons, there was an it girl in the 90s named Kadada Jones. A young woman is typically considered an it girl if they're conventionally attractive, has great sense of fashion, they're close friends with other Hollywood socialites, and in a lot of cases come from wealthy or famous parents. And Kadada happens to check off every box. I feel like people often see her in throwback pics or heard about her relationship with Tupac. But do you actually know who Kadada Jones is? 
From her relationships with legendary rappers to her friendships with young Hollywood celebs, this is the untold truth about Kadada Jones. Kadada Ann Jones was born on March 22, 1974 in Los Angeles, California. She is the daughter of legendary black record producer Quincy Jones and white actress Peggy Lipton, and also the older sister of actress Rashida Jones. The girls grew up in the wealthy Bel Air neighborhood of Los Angeles, and in school, Kadada faced racism from her white classmates for being biracial. Meanwhile, life for her younger sister Rashida was easier because she was white passing and not many questioned her racial identity. Peggy's parents were upset that she married and had kids with a black man. They were closer to Rashida since she looked more white. But Kadada says she felt as though her grandparents never really approved of her because she had a little more black genes than Rashida did. In a Glamour magazine interview, Rashida said, I had no control over how I looked. This is my natural hair. These are my natural eyes. I've never tried to be anything that I'm not. Today, I feel guilty knowing that because of the way our genes tumbled out, Kadada had to go through pain I didn't have to endure. Loving her so much, I'm sad that I'll never share that experience with her. Kadada had learning disabilities and was held back twice and expelled from 10 schools for behavioral issues. Peggy finally enrolled her in a school with more black students at her request. She may not have been a scholar, but Kadada found her calling with style and fashion. After high school, she enrolled in the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising. Outside of school, she worked as a wardrobe stylist for Vibe Magazine, a lifestyle, music, and entertainment magazine founded by her father, Quincy Jones, and producer David Salzman. Designer Tommy Hilfiger was impressed by a cover Kadada styled and invited her to work for his brand. Kadada ended up quitting school a short time after at the age of 19 to work in the publicity department at Tommy Hilfiger. There, she became close friends to Andy Hilfiger, Tommy's younger brother. The preppy brand was looking to target a more younger urban market after rappers started wearing and promoting the brand. Together, Kadada and Andy pitched Tommy the concept of a streetwear line, and Tommy Jeans was the result. Around this time, in 1992, she started dating rapper LL Cool J. LL and his longtime girlfriend Simone were on a break, and they had just welcomed a second baby. She said she got my number from Russell Simmons and had been trying to hook up with me for weeks. She kept calling me, like every other day. And finally, we decided to go out on a date. All right, so <laughs> the rest of the stuff is cute. Like, yeah, Hollywood it girl. But this is like, it was like right after this is where I paused it and was like, no, let me start filming because this is something's not adding up to me. So you just keep in mind right now, he said that she was running him down. Like she was after him. She wanted him and he wasn't interested, but he finally gave in. Let's hear about their relationship after he gave in. He and Kadada dated for two years before he broke up with her, citing her spiritual beliefs and practices as the cause. In his memoir titled, I Make My Own Rules, LL Cool J said, she would go to an ashram, consult a guru, and pray to statues. Before my album 14 Shots to the Dome dropped, Kadada told me she threw some kind of stick into the eternal fire for my album. I was like, yo, why would you do that? I didn't ask you to do that. That joint flopped crazily. Oh well, I'm sorry I cared, she said. I Y'all know, y'all know, come on, we're, we're on this channel together, we've been on this journey together, y'all know that I am all for the spirituality, the spiritual journey, do what you got to do. But, but, this is the daughter of Quincy Jones, Miss Peggy daughter. I don't know why y'all would think. Again, this isn't anything that I've researched, so I, this is just a, probably a misplaced ass theory. So we are not going to hold me to anything that I'm saying unless it's right. <laughs> it just seems funny, like she chased him down, a stick in the eternal flame for his album then his album flops feelings but she had hurt me too i know she meant well but i just couldn't get with that she took me to her guru once and i remember kneeling before this strange young woman who was touching feathers end quote a year after the breakup he ended up marrying his longtime girlfriend simone by the mid 90s kadada was wearing many hats he rejects her finally gives in and dates her she makes his album drop 
That's what I heard. She knows what she's doing. Like this was not like, she she's not dabbling in witchcraft. She knew what her intention. If she wanted his album to surpass, that was the goal, it, it would have happened. This family, we know how they get down. So for that to happen like that, and then he leaves, and I, I'm sure there's so much more behind the scenes of their relationship, but then he leaves and then goes back to his, you know, ex and then marries her, like. As a brand like styling and talent scouting. She was also chosen to be the face of the Tommy Hilfiger brand and appeared in quite a few campaigns. She helped transform the brand by recruiting popular black figures in music like TLC, Usher, Mary J. Blige, Snoop Dogg, Aaliyah, Destiny's Child, and Michael Jackson. Jackson's Neverland. It was amazing. There I was meeting the king of pop. Oh, thank you so much. Also there taking in this magical experience were actress Nastasha Kinski, Michael's longtime friend and producer Quincy Jones, and Quincy's daughter. No, something is so off about Quincy Jones. Like I just don't like his whole like it's just off. Like his aura. I didn't like that hug. I don't like how so many people in the industry treated Michael too. Like it was like he was like an object for them. Like it then they did the same thing with Justin Bieber. It's a handful of them that they really sit there and groom and they just spend all this extra attention on. It bothers me how they tried to ruin Michael like that when he was like still a lost kid himself. Like it, it's just really like to watch things like this play out and then be older now when you watched people say so many things your whole life and then to be able to watch it from like your adult eyes and be like how did y'all let all of this stuff rock for so long <laughs> nearly every magazine wants michael on its cover but quincy says it took his daughter kidada who's known michael since she was a kid to make the deal happen he told me out there that he said uh, i trust kidada whatever she recommend so I'll, I'll try it you know he's got nice broad shoulders yeah, he's got a thin. nice height he's got a nice yeah. figure so clothes look good on yeah. him though she posed with michael for a couple of shots kadana was really there to style a shoot she's the one who got michael to wear hip-hop looks by tommy hilfiger and that's another thing too you see she was the one who got michael to be able to wear these things my theory that i have doesn't really have much to do with michael but she works for the magazine she works with the celebrities like putting them in these outfits getting them comfortable to do things whatever but she's not like a regular girl your father hired you still like so it's how do i say this without giving all the credit to her father because she does deserve credit like we're not i'm not gonna take away from what she has built and done but she was able to get here and do these and be in these rooms and know these people because of her father and like these are people like relationships that she acquired through this and when you see these celebrities like that i post on my page and stuff and how they have like oh, the symbolism or like one of their eyes is covered and all that each of those pictures doesn't mean like oh this person sold their soul this day because they took that picture like that that's not what that means i post those things to let you know like this person is a puppet they're not really fully in control they're doing what they're being told to because nobody just goes let me do this just off rip like for what like when you had all the options to do everything else unless it's like of like you're, you're in motion and like something is going on you know but like just to sit and like think like what great pose can I do today you know what I'm gonna cover half of my face that's great like so I feel like when they do these poses and they're dressed in certain things they have on the checkerboard it's not them like coming on set because they don't have that control we all know that they don't have that control there's set designers there's directors there's producers there's mad people there making all of this come together they are just the puppet so i want y'all to keep that in mind like she's the daughter of the label head who's running the magazine whatever agendas they want to be pushed can be pushed very easily through her and that's a lot for other magazines a lot of the people on the payroll are family or have been in the industry or they are very cool with pushing agendas as well like I don't I don't everything is not so black and white or just oh this person is because they're they've been seen in this a lot of times they're just being used and these quiet it girls behind the scenes and the PR and the managers those be the people in the background really calling all the shots Diesel Adidas and Carl Kanai a radical departure for an artist known for creating his own style Kanata was a struggle to get him into any of these clothes nope. was he, he was he was more than happy to put all of them on. He was, really? Yep. So there wasn't anything that you brought where he said, mm -mm, I'm not wearing that color? Or no. No, he was, he was totally trusting. He put it in my hands. He trusts me. <laughs> Meanwhile, a romance with Kadada and another hip hop icon was brewing. Sometime in 1995, she met rapper Tupac at a club before one of his sexual assault trials. Two years prior, in a Source magazine interview, 
Tupac criticized her father, Quincy Jones, for his relationships with white women and making Tupac went in a magazine two years ago and said this about Quincy Jones and her entire family, right? Little things like Quincy Jones and his insistence on marrying and sticking his in white women. The reason my house is broken up is because of his punk. This year I'm charging Quincy Jones and all those other mixed family mother effers. We need one generation of blank with blank. How are we gonna have mixed families and we don't even have black families? Kids, quote unquote. And he said that Quincy Jones made a bunch of effed up kids. Now, two years later, this man is going to start dating one of those effed up kids. Just free will. Just, you know what? Actually, I'm going to date you. I want her. I, I just, I, I feel like she's making little potions and like she's, like she, she knows. I feel like even her father might, might be sending her to do these things. Like, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Listening to this, I feel like these are all people, like the people that she dates and like the people that she has issues with. Like, she feels rejected. Like anything, she goes out of her way to be with them. And then things end up happening to them. But also, we don't know what Quincy's doing. He could be, you know, making sacrifices or, you know, doing things, making deals behind the scenes and sending her like, oh yeah, you know what? He was just talking about me, so now go ruin him. Kadada never responded publicly. But her sister Rashida responded to his interview in a letter published in Source magazine saying, I cannot view this article or this man without bias. But I do think that anyone who reads this article would be shocked by his ignorance and lack of respect for his people. To demean a man like Quincy Jones, a man who came from the ghetto of Chicago and through his talent and perseverance became a living music legend, demeans the whole progress of African Americans. This artist and his music are in no way, as the article puts it, responsible. He is purely self-absorbed and indulgent. Where the hell would you be if black people like him hadn't paved the way for you to even have the opportunity to express your Yourself. I don't see you fighting for your race. In my opinion, you're destroying it and sh**ing all over people." End quote. The second time he and Kadada met, he apologized. They exchanged numbers and began dating, despite him being married to his first wife, Keisha Morris Shakur. This man is still married. He gonna leave his wife to go be with this woman who he said was effed up and came from an effed up family situation. Like who he had just married that year in April. After their marriage was annulled, Tupac proposed to Kadada. It wasn't long before he introduced her to his mother, Afeni, saying, I love her. She's going to be my wife. She's going to have my children. Quincy wasn't happy about their relationship and confronted Tupac at a restaurant about his comments, but they were able to settle their differences and the two became close friends. In 1996, the couple began living together in Calabasas and stayed together until his death a few months later. Could Again, I, this is crazy Shelby with her reaching. <sighs> y'all don't think that's what Quincy wanted? Like, yeah, he was mad or whatever, but y'all don't think that's what he wanted, like for him to come over and like, you know, them squash it. And he sees like, you know, I'm not, this is not an effed up family. You're going to take this back. You're going to, now you're going to be part of my effed up family that you had so much to say. You had mad stuff to say about us, but now you're part of this family. You want to marry my daughter. You want to be with her, right? And then she's the last person you with before you die. <laughs> and it's crazy because like we have all of these other like speculations about other people. Like I never, never heard anything like this about her. Like this is this is 100% just in my head. Like I just just from watching this video, I've I've never heard anything about her other than you know everybody loves her and Aaliyah's pictures and we gonna get to Aaliyah. Cause like we got all these theories about like what happened like Tupac's death and it was these people and it was that and that and that. And I'm like yo, this ca sounds kind of fishy. Like it's just it's just weird. She had some voodoo up her sleeve. Like I think there was something. <laughs> was with Tupac in Las Vegas to celebrate his business partner Tracy Daniel Robinson's birthday and to attend the Bruce Selden versus Mike Tyson boxing match at the MGM Grand Hotel, but was back at the hotel when he was shot. She was one of the last people to speak to him before he slipped into a coma and eventually passed away. Three days later, she had his face tattooed on her arm. In her father's autobiography, she wrote, Tupac was the love of my life. He and I lived together for four months and then he was murdered in Las Vegas in 1996. It was the most horrible thing that ever happened to me. I knew we should have never gone to Vegas that night. I had a horrible feeling about it. I've gone over it in my mind a million times. It wasn't supposed to happen. 
We weren't supposed to be there. It was the worst possible thing that could have happened. I still to this day don't know who shot him. I wasn't able to say goodbye. It's not something that should happen to anyone, end quote. And again, if y'all know how magic works and like how, you know, manifesting things and making things happen works, it's not like she went and paid the person who shot him or like not her, let me not even say, we're not even playing, we're not playing these fingers, right? Um, or, but like, let's say these people who like make the sacrifices or even the label heads or like people that, you, you know, they orchestrate these things. With magic and you working on voodoo and doing all that type of stuff, you can just make somebody fall sick or you can make an accident happen like you can manifest somebody getting hit by a bus like things like that like people are weird and people are wicked and if you like it's really sad but like you those are the type of things that you can do and I feel like just something about like I don't know like she is then then who does she meet right after Tupac dies Kadada says she was depressed and numb for nine months after Tupac's death. She said, for a while afterward, I didn't want to be alive. I was on my back, literally on my back for months. My father underestimated how that affected me and shaped and molded me as a human being. He came around, eventually- Then we got this, my father underestimated how much it affected me and molded me as a person. I, again, her father could have sent her to do some dirty work that she ended up falling in love, but then it all ended up ha like, you know, we don't know, but I just feel like she's not innocent in these things and he's not Quincy either. We gotta watch them. I don't, they just don't know, like I just... He realized how it affected me, though I had to really show him, end quote. I was at a club one night in New York and he thought I was Rashida. Tupac did and he came up to me and he was apologizing about the article that he wrote about my parents. And you know, inside I'm just like, oh my God, he is so cute. Kadadra and Tupac soon grow close, much to her dad's dismay. I remember one night he was like, you know, you can date whoever you want, but you will not bring Tupac to my house. That's one rapper you will not be dating. One night while Kadadra and Tupac were at a restaurant, Quincy walked in the door. Tupac said, I have a few things to talk to you about. And my dad was like, I have a few things to talk to you about, too. He apologized. And, and when he was apologizing to white girl. And, like, we know a lot of this stuff is scripted and, like, orchestrated. And, like, it, yeah, you think, like, oh, they're sharing their, you know, their stories. Or, oh, I saw an interview. We watched JoJo sit and tell us years later, even though Leave Get Out and all that stuff was number one and she was supposedly the it girl and all that stuff, we saw that she had to fake her MTV cribs. They fake in interviews. You're not really getting no money. You got to say whatever sounds good. You got to create a story and spin that story. Oh, evidence. Like, oh, well, she said once in an interview that that's not true. I don't care. <laughs> San Francisco said, hey, Tupac, remember us? <laughs> you know? He said, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. But I heard that he got shot. And I oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, you forgot about that. We didn't forget about that. You called us an effed up family, and now you're part of this family. I'm just, is it? To tell her, she got on a plane from New York immediately. I called my dad. I told him what was going on. He didn't think he was going to die. He was just like, can't come, you know? Love, I love is with you, can't come. For eight or nine months, I tell you, I could not get a word out. I couldn't leave my house. And then I harbored a lot of anger towards my dad because he wasn't there. When he really deals with stuff, personally, I think the pain is too much for him. He can't deal with it at the moment. Um, but, but later on, he does. When I came home, we'd all talk and cry and look at pictures and stuff. So in his own way of dealing with pain, he was 100% there. But it wouldn't be long before she found comfort in a new relationship. Kadada continued working as a stylist and talent scout for Tommy Hilfiger. She is partially responsible for transforming the label into a young, hip, and trendy fashion brand. She recruited a lot of her young Hollywood friends to model for the brand like Ivanka Trump and Kate Hudson. We bring it to you live, direct, Aaliyah on stage. Come on, come on. While styling a Tommy Hilfiger fashion show, Kadada met rising R&B superstar Aaliyah, and they hit it off right away. She said, you know when the dogs are at the dog park and they run up to each other and their tails wag and they smell each other? It was just easy. As soon as we met, we just started talking and that was it. We were like four or five years apart. We were into fashion, music, boys, pop culture, sense of humor. That's what I would say was our common ground. We used to do prank call after prank call. Her mom allowed me to be her guardian for a little bit. I was a few years older, so when she went to Europe, I was the guardian, which was a complete and total nightmare. I'll keep it mild. In other words, I was the handler. 
but it was just young, fun, and maybe I didn't really understand the boundaries. We got in trouble quite a few times, but she was the funniest friend. A lot of friends have quarrels, and maybe we had a couple disagreements, but our friendship was based on going out and having a great time. I just, I, like, I would be scared to make her mad. Like, this is what, like, if it's, I don't know if it's just me, but, like, that's what this video is giving me. Like, stay on her good side and you will be good. Don't make this girl mad. I still wholeheartedly have a full theory of why I think Jay and Jay sacrificed Aaliyah. And, like, I have, like, a whole play out of why I think so. But after seeing this, this is just a, like, it's, it's just like, wow, this is, and this is how we know, like, a lot of theories are just that. They're just theories, like, we really don't know. But it's crazy how so many different things can seem, like, because I really, I, I'm going more towards being but this seems like involvement like I can't explain it but like you'll maybe it's just me oh yeah I don't I don't know we're gonna we ate breakfast late at night we got our nails done a lot we shopped a lot when no one even knew what Kitson was we would be there all the time we spent a lot of time getting matching outfits and clothes we had boyfriends at the same time so we would get them the same presents we even vacationed together we went to Fiji we did a lot of making up dances. Every time we got to a dance in place, we'd end up doing the house party dance right in the middle of the party. I mean, we didn't even care. People just thought we were stupid. Meanwhile, Kadada was taking modeling more seriously and was also expanding her resume to acting, appearing in the films, The Faculty, Black and White with Brooke Shields and Thicker Than Water, among others. Kadada Jones and Leonardo DiCaprio were also rumored to have a brief romance in 1999, but those reports have never been confirmed. She remained close friends to Aaliyah until her untimely death in 2001. Her mother Peggy said, I loved watching Kadada and Aaliyah together. They were going to be lifelong best friends. They wanted to get married in a double wedding, have their kids together, end quote. Rashida also said, when I heard about Aaliyah's death, I dropped everything and went straight to LA. Kadada collapsed in my arms. She said, now you're going to have to step in and be my little sister. Being together during Kadada's most vulnerable time made us realize we were irreplaceable to each other, end quote. We were in the process of starting a girl's clothing line. It was called Dolly Pop. Right when she passed, we were getting ready to sign our contracts for that. We were making plans for this brand that was gonna be girly and cute and have Japanese inspiration. This was seven or eight years ago. So the whole Japanese inspiration wasn't at the forefront. Her instinct was definitely forward and a little brave. Two years later, she married Jeffrey Nash, but filed for divorce a few years later. In 2005, Kadada brought her talents to the Walt Disney Company, Disney. where she was a designer. Over the years, her job expanded to include consulting on existing Disney projects and designing Kadada for Disney Couture, a line of clothing and jewelry for adults sold at boutiques. Since her It Girl days in the 90s, Kadada Jones has slowly moved away from the public eye. In 2017, she published a book titled School of Awake, A Girl's Guide to the Universe. The book offers advice for young girls and practices they should consider to get in touch with their spiritual side. Like I said, I could be reaching and don't shoot me because I know how young girls like to tussle, okay? I haven't even got to fully form the theory in my head yet of this, but it's just a little suspicious. Like I just, I, I, I think she's beautiful though and I think she's talented like she you know it's cool that she fell back from the industry sometimes people they don't want the spotlight anymore they see all of that stuff happen and they just dip out and then they just be about that check and she went to Disney so she bought that check so don't think because y'all don't see her that she's not making moves and like that she's not set up good you know you don't always have to choose the fame you can just choose the money the LL Cool J Tupac and Aaliyah like it just all seemed like I'm still gonna go with um, I'm still gonna post and share my theory, but I also just wanted this one here on the books too because you just you never know. Like we we really we don't know. So yeah, comment down below and let me know what you think. Um, for this video, I'm fully opening up the space for you guys to say if I am reaching or not. Okay, like we are. You gotta let me know <laughs> if I'm reaching. I will not be offended by being called a stretcher, a reacher, a leaper for this because I wholeheartedly could be. But just something feels a little off. So, I, you know, even when I'm wrong, I'm right. Because when I was wrong, I could have been right. 
so yeah thanks for tuning in if you're not subscribed what are you doing hit the subscribe button please hit the like button it really helps me out a lot share these videos with a friend go find your favorite video on my channel and just send it to a friend because you care about them <laughs> youtube has been like heavily pushing my videos out of the algorithm so i need you guys to help me because everybody's been commenting saying that they're not getting my notifications all these and like i'm I, i'm so sorry like it's not me it's out of my control they don't want you to hear this <laughs> Am I the drama? I don't think I'm the drama. Am I the villain? <laughs> yeah, I love you guys. I will see you in my next video. I'm, I'm gonna hit this one.